If you're someone who loves bonding with teams and collaborating with people and feeling like you're part of a community, then Duke is a school that you're absolutely gonna love. Good morning and welcome back to MBA Monday. I'm Angela Guido, the founder of Career Protocol, and I am here to help you get in to the business school of your dreams. Our team at Career Protocol has vast experience helping amazing people like you get into great MBA programs so that they can build a career they love. People who do what they love are just nicer. They're just happier. They make life better for the people around them. That's what we're after. So if you are applying to business school, one of the schools you probably should very seriously consider is the Duke Fuqua MBA. It's known for creating very happy MBA graduates. Today, I'm gonna to tell you the three things that you need to know if you hope to gain admission to the Duke MBA program. I'm gonna start with the 25 random things. This is one of our favorite essays to work on at Career Protocol because it really allows us to see all the different aspects of our clients' lives. And for the most part, when your list is final, you're gonna present something that is not just a mini masterpiece that fully captures your life and your experiences in a meaningful way, but it's also gonna have your sense of humor, your personality written all over it. Have fun when you're creating your list of 25 things, but the tip that I wanna make sure that you keep in mind is that it's not just a random list. You can mix things up so, you know, every once in a while someone will have a chronological list of things about themselves, and that is in some ways less interesting than a list that moves around at random and talks about pet peeves and then significant career experience and then family stuff and then what you like for dinner. You kind of want the ordering of things to be random so that as the reader is going through, they're having multiple moments of surprise and delight. What comes next is a surprise. It doesn't quite fit with what came before and it's really enjoyable to read. But that's not the most important tip. The most important tip is to make sure that each line item, that each number, both individually and collectively, are revealing something meaningful about you. So here's a really simple example. Let's say your favorite food is kimchi. It's not my favorite food, but it is something that I eat pretty much every week to this day. Don't just say, my favorite food is kimchi. Yes, it's random. Yes, it's a fact. Yes, it's wonderful because kimchi is wonderful, but it doesn't really tell us anything meaningful about you. Go that extra mile and add a little bit of context. Add a short anecdote. Make the reader understand what this actually says about you as a person or how it relates to the broader story of your life. So I might say something like, my favorite food is kimchi. My fridge always smells. Ever since I lived in South Korea, I'm in love with this spicy, pungent delicacy. Now, that's revealing this really interesting fact about me that's much bigger than kimchi, which is that I lived in South Korea for a long time. That's a very meaningful piece of information. So this isn't like the world's best random fact ever, but the idea is I'm taking it further than just the fact and I'm giving you information that allows you to make sense of it in the context of my life. And that's really what you wanna do. You wanna make sure that each of the random things is really showing something meaningful about your personality, your life story, and or your values. And then all together, when the reader is done, they should be left with a really accurate impression of who you are. Like, when you walk in the room, they know what they're gonna get. That's your goal with the 25 things. Now the second thing you really need to know about Duke, which is actually the first thing, the very most important thing, and the thing that you're gonna spend a lot of your time on in the application process. That is, that Team Fuqua is kind of a big deal. They do not take this concept lightly. They do not consider themselves just another good MBA program that will take anyone who's smart and basically clears their statistical bar. They're looking for people who genuinely want to be a part of building an interconnected community of awesome people at Duke and beyond. What does this mean for your application? 
It means that you absolutely must network with current students. If at all possible, you must visit campus. You need to go there and see what it's really like. What are the buildings that people actually hang out in? What are the conversations that are happening in the hallways? What's the experience like to be immersed in that world where people support each other, where they greet each other in the hallways, where there's this palpable sense that we're in this together and we're part of an intimate community. They take this aspect of their culture extremely seriously and they are screening, as you would imagine, for people who want to be a part of it. They routinely waitlist people with astronomical GMAT scores who haven't done the work to show them that they are aware of what Duke culture is all about and that they're genuinely eager to be a part of Team Fuqua. Just look at their application questions. They've got the 25 random things and then the only other required essay is based on your understanding of Fuqua culture, what are the three ways you expect to contribute at our school? They are very, very serious about understanding your awareness and commitment to sharing and building on these values while you're at the school. So do in-depth research on the program, do primary research by talking to students and ideally visiting campus, and really do the work to get to know this community. For what it's worth, all of our students who end up at Duke become raving fans. Whether you love football and tailgating or not, which is occasionally part of Duke culture, if you're someone who loves bonding with teams and collaborating with people and feeling like you're part of a community, then Duke is a school that you're absolutely gonna love. And by the way, if you'd like help doing your research, you can jump into our AI-driven school scouting toolkit that gives you several ways to shortcut the uh, internet research aspect of your school research using AI, using chat GPT prompts that we've developed. This is a really good starting point to research any of your programs to get the lay of the land of everything that you need to be aware of so that then you can go on and network much more effectively with members of the community. The third thing I want you to know about if you're applying to Duke, and this is especially if you identify as female, is their Women's Leadership Weekend. We're gonna link it down in the description below. The event this year in 2023 happens between November 9th and November 11th. It's a three-day event in conjunction with the Association of Women in Business at Duke that is the most incredible pre-MBA networking opportunity that you will likely have in any MBA application program, with the possible exception of Michigan Ross's Women's Weekend, which is also really amazing. But if you are applying, and you identify as female, we really encourage you to attend this event because it will check uh, box number two solidly. You will get to know lots of people at the school, you'll get to know the culture, you'll be able to talk about it in a meaningful way. And all of our clients who have gone to this event have emerged raving fans. It led them in the end frequently to choose Duke over higher ranked schools because they really felt at home in this culture and they knew that that was really where they wanted to pursue their MBA. So take advantage of all the networking opportunities that the schools present, either at broader conferences or individual events hosted by the schools. But if you're applying to Duke, please do be aware of this very special event focused on women. And whether you're applying in round one or round two, go to this event. It will really help your applications and it'll be a lot of fun. All right, those are the three most important things you need to know if the Duke MBA is on your list. Here's one last bonus tip for all of you, not just the female identifying. Duke uniquely has the opportunity to schedule an interview without needing to wait to be invited based on your core application submission. The only requirement is that you need to have started an application, filled in your biographical information, and then choose a time to interview. Before, these were only on-campus in-person interviews that you, you, you could opt into, but now they also have virtual interviews that are possible. And so if you're someone who feels very confident 
in your ability to communicate live and in person and to engender a connection in an interview. And you feel like you can do that right now, even before you've completed all the rest of your whole application process, then give yourself an advantage and sign up for one of the open interviews with Duke and then submit your application later when the time comes or when the deadline comes. That's like a little backdoor trick for those of you who are confident. If you're not super confident or feel, if you don't feel super ready to interview now or before you submit your application, then don't worry. You can just interview with everyone else when interview invitations come out after they evaluate the first round of applications for round one and round two. All right, that's it. I hope Duke is on your list because of all the schools that we send clients to, it is definitely the one where people emerge the most fanatical about their program. They have the best time, they make the best friends, they really love their experience at Duke. I'm wishing you all the best wherever your MBA journey takes you, and I will see you here next week on MBA Monday. Bye. Pew. Get out of here. Get out of here, hey, yo. I'm filming here. <laughs> I'm walking here.